Hey photographers, today I want to go over what some of you may be doing wrong with the mixer brush in frequency separation. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out my video. Today I want to cover something I've been noticing a lot recently online. Basically, what it is, is people using the mixer brush in their frequency separation and changing the structure of their subject's face by moving around the shadows and tones on the low layer in a way that completely moves their features like their cheekbones or their nose, their brow, chin, etc. So I want to go over what I'm seeing and what you need to watch out for while you're using the mixer brush in your frequency separation technique to smooth out your colors and tones. Before we get started, I want to know what techniques you're using to edit your photos in Photoshop. Are you using frequency separation? Are you using the mixer brush? Go ahead and drop a comment below and let me know how you're editing your photos. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, everybody. What we have here is a beautiful portrait of Miss Ginny B. She's a very popular model here in the United States. I'm gonna use this as an example of what I've been seeing and what I feel like you shouldn't be doing. I've already created my frequency separation stack here, separating out my textures from my colors and tones. And if I toggle these on and off, you can actually see what I'm talking about. So I'll hide the underlying tones and colors. You can see I have my textures or I can hide my textures and you can see I have just my underlying colors and tones. What I'm seeing is all done here on the colors and tones layer. And it's happening now that the mixer brush has become such a popular technique to use for frequency separation. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back on real quick. And I've got my mixer brush and I've already got my settings that I like to work with. And uh, this isn't gonna be a full frequency separation tutorial. I'm just gonna cover this issue that I've been seeing a lot of. So basically what's going on is people are taking the mixer brush and in the process of trying to smooth out areas of skin and blend tones to create that nice even you know, skin color and tone, they're actually moving features around. The way that they're doing that is the features in your face or in anything, we translate that with our vision by translating the shadows and highlights. So if you move where a shadow is located, you're actually restructuring the features that are there to our eye. So just an extreme example, a lot of times what I see is people moving the cheekbones unintentionally. So I'm going to go ahead and do exactly that. I'm going to actually, let's bring this down and say I'm trying to smooth out that blush area, right? So, I, so I've blended it out and it doesn't look like I've done too much, but if I go over here and toggle on what I've done and toggle it off, you can see how I've moved her cheekbone down. Or if I, uh, let's go back up and move it up. So if I take and try to blend up into, I'm basically raising her cheekbone. All right, so I've moved that shadow or that blush, that contour of her face up. And you see how I've completely raised her cheekbone. And that's not something that you really want to be doing because you're basically changing the appearance of your subject. Let's go back over here. Another thing that I've been noticing is people, you know, trying to lighten or soften the laugh lines. And when they do, they're pulling the color up and out. And these are extreme examples. And then if you notice, whenever I toggle that on and off, I've just changed the shape of her face. Also, another one that I notice a lot of is dimples and chins and the cleft under the lip. They try and brighten them out like this. And not only are you changing the structure of their face, you're also changing the lighting that you spent so much time 
creating whenever you shot the image. So now that I've adjusted this, and I mean, it doesn't look bad now, but if I toggle it on and off, you'll actually see how I've changed the shape of her face. I've actually made her chin look wider and I've gotten rid of that little bit of a dimple that's hiding there. Another one I see is people trying to smooth out the brow or the, the area between the eyebrows. And when they do that, they're flattening that area. So now whenever I toggle that on and off, you see how I've just widened the bridge of the nose and flattened her face right there. It looks very unnatural. And obviously it doesn't look like she does in person. Another thing I see is people moving the highlights or the shadows along the bridge of the nose over. So now, whenever I toggle that on and off, oops, wrong one, <laughs> you'll see how I basically changed the shape of her nose. So yeah, I mean, this is something that I'm seeing a lot of people doing and don't get me wrong, it's very easy for you to not notice how significant the changes are that you're making while you're using the mixer brush because you're basically building in the effect to get that smooth transition. But I highly recommend that you go in here and every time you work on an area, toggle the changes on and off and see if you've significantly changed the features of your subject because that's not the point that you're trying to accomplish. I mean, obviously we, we've had Liquify for years and nowadays with modern Liquify and the newer versions of Photoshop, it actually has the content to wear for the face where you can adjust facial features and a lot of people do that. I actually personally do not. I don't like to change the facial features because I feel like you're changing the person, you know? And I mean, there, there's obviously a huge debate on liquefying to pull in waistlines and increase, you know, chest size and everything else. And I'm not even gonna get into that debate, you know, to each their own, it is what it is. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and go back up here. And let's see if I can think of other things I've seen. Um, actually, yeah. Pulling in shadows from uh, darker areas of the face. And you see that, you know, the changes are subtle, but whenever you toggle them on and off, I've just completely changed the entire shape of her face right there. And I mean, this is extreme and I'm not being very precise with my edges. I'm just showing you how quickly you can actually change that person's face and what you need to watch out for. It's because the point of using the mixer brush and this version of uh, frequency separation is to get a very natural look that accomplishes that, you know, perfect retouch look, I guess you would call it. It's not to completely change the person in your frame and make them look like somebody they are not. So that's all I wanted to cover today. And I mean, I, I will be doing other videos where I go over other aspects and breaking down different parts of frequency separation and how I use it. That was just something I wanted to cover real quick because I'm seeing a lot of this happen. I'm seeing it whenever people are posting before and after of their retouch shots online. I've also seen it in a couple of videos here on YouTube of people that are actually demonstrating their frequency separation techniques. So be very conscious of how you're really moving the shadows around on your subject because you don't want to completely restructure their face and make them into someone else. That being said, if you found this interesting or if you found this helpful, go ahead and hit that like below. If you have any questions or comments on it, go ahead and drop a comment below for me also. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these videos. I also do live group photo chats on Wednesday nights and Saturday mornings. So if you want to be notified anytime I'm going live or anytime I upload a new video, go ahead and hit that bell down below and turn on the notifications for my channel. That being said, guys, thanks for checking out my video. Y'all have a great day.